it's a process and a lot of it boils down to like figuring out the right like legal circumventions uh to like work with causes in a way that's compliant that doesn't create unnecessary tax burden for users for the causes etc um, and just make sure making sure that we're like doing everything kosher and like by the book um, but by doing that it, it creates a lot of friction and a lot of blockers to actually the impact that could be made welcome to building better worlds our mission here is simple to explore how the innovations of Web3 can deliver on its potential to build a sustainable, more equitable world. I'm your host, Mutz, and today we have a special guest all the way from San Francisco, California, and uh, he is helping with social impact and bringing artists together in the new Web3 environment and doing amazing work. And so without further ado, let's welcome Kyle Gordon. Hi, Kyle, how you doing? Hey, how's it going, everyone? Good. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, you told me a little bit ago that you're in San Francisco and the weather is good. Uh, how is your day going so far? Uh, so far, pretty good. I mean, lots of meetings all the time. Everyone wants to talk at all hours of the day. Uh, getting in a little bit of artwork today because uh, I mostly make a lot of my own art these days. Um, and yeah, just putting through some like brainstorming plans with a couple other friends, colleagues uh, for some projects that are in the works. Um, oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, busy. <laughs> so uh, I read up a little bit about you. Uh, you began your career creating experiential art. What? I don't even know what that means. What does experiential art mean? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So anything that was like a real world immersive experience, uh, like my, my bread and butter for like the last 10 years was designing like music festival and like concert staging. Um, so when you go to like Coachella or like to see your favorite band play, um, I was the guy who was like helping design like the stage setup, the lighting, the video, the animation. And that also kind of bled into like creative direction and like branding and like illustration for bands as well. Okay, so you make you make the concert look good, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. And that bleeds into like a lot of other things, you know, conferences, arts, like digital experiences. So, you know, that's how we got to today. You're the guy, you're the guy that makes us want to draw in and come in and buy the ticket and do all that stuff because it looks good, it feels good, it gets us going, right? Yeah, flashy salesman. <laughs> I like that. All right, so uh, you've been doing this, what, for about over a decade, right? Yeah. And in between there, you decided to build a company called Doing Good. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. What is Doing Good and what does Doing Good do, basically? Yeah, yeah so basically, like, around two years ago, I'll give you, like, the, the bridge story. Like, two years ago when the pandemic hit, obviously, like, concerts and, like, live experiences weren't happening. Um, so I took my, like, studio uh, and basically started doing, like, digital experiences. Um, anything from, like, virtual Zoom music festivals to, like, online, like, retreats and, like, different kinds of stuff um, and seeing what sticked. And it was during that time I discovered rediscovered like web three and blockchain like i had been involved in 2017 strictly as an uh it, investor i guess if you want to call it that i was more of a speculator um and then fast forward to now i'm seeing a lot of applications of art um especially in the web three and blockchain space um so for about six months uh i basically was creating my own work um, releasing NFTs, like trying to learn as much as possible. I was like an early member of the Friends with Benefits community um, and then found myself um, helping like curate uh, and work with the Open Earth Foundation to put together the Carbon Drop, uh, which was myself, Beeple, Rafik Anadol, G Monk, and a couple other artists. Um, and we were, I would say, one of the first massive art centric fundraisers for social impact. I think that that charity auction raised like over six million dollars for climate change. Um, and this is when like the whole climate conversation was happening around Web3 and NFTs and all of that kind of like blew up at the same time. Um, and so a lot of causes after that experience were like, oh, oh, crap, like we can use Web3 and NFTs as like a fundraising mechanism, similar to like a Kickstarter thing, but, you know, for for like new age fundraising and really tap into this market. Um, so I was talking to like a lot of people, companies, brands, like social causes, um, creators, 
Um, and around that time, I was approached by uh, our founder at Doing Good, uh, Manu. Um, and we were talking a bit about impact and arts. And he had he was working on a project that was making a social media platform uh, that was helping people with uh, COVID um, basically bridge into like an NFT social media experience where every transaction kind of contributes to social impact and also proves that you're contributing to social impact using blockchain technology. So you can actually like do proof of impact uh, and like have like a whole profile dashboard that shows like what causes you contribute to, what regions in the world they're a part of, um, and really get a map of like people that are like verifiably like contributing to impact or positive social impact. Oh, great. Uh, and so in doing a little bit of background, I found out that Doing Good has about 200 social impact causes that's affiliated with right yep. and so how number one how do you pick the social impact causes that you work with and how are you able to build this network of people that are trying to do good in our in our world yeah so man i wish it was easy it's very <laughs> right? difficult and it's all the more reason uh regulators need to pay attention more to this space not from like a like crackdown kind of standpoint, but actually building out fair regulations and frameworks um, that everyone can agree on. Um, the biggest obstacle we had isn't necessarily that there is demand and wanting to get people on the platform. It's actually compliance and legal based. Um, different jurisdictions have different rules, legislature, protocols on like the flow of funds, which is really everything when it comes down to like crypto and blockchain. So as a Swiss registered company, um, we can only work in certain jurisdictions um, based on like legal frameworks and stuff. Um, like we're working like with regulators, with our like legal team all the time to kind of figure out how we can like responsibly onboard like causes from all over the world. But right now it's really difficult um, and, and it's still difficult. We've been doing this for a year, spent tons on like legal to like figure this out, put in the legwork there. Um, but it's still super difficult. So like, at least for now, most of our causes are United States based. Uh, we work with the giving block a lot. I believe we just started working uh, and onboarding causes in the UK as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a process. And a lot of it boils down to like figuring out the right, like legal circumventions uh, to like work with causes in a way that's compliant, that doesn't create unnecessary tax burden for users, for the causes, et cetera. Um, and just make sure, making sure that we're like doing everything kosher and like by the book. Um, but by doing that, it, it creates a lot of friction and a lot of blockers to actually the impact that could be made. All right. So with that said, how do you, how, how is doing good, your company, how is doing good help build a better world? Because this is what it's all about. Yeah. What do you envision doing good if we can ex extrapolate it out? What impact could it have? How, how can it have that impact? Yeah, so I think the idea is and like where we're going now, like, you know, the first year was really focused on like our beta, like allowing creators to like frictionlessly kind of come in and experiment with the tools we've built and actually select from over like 200 social causes um, and trustlessly, like if they make a sale, have that money contributed to a social cause and actually show that they're contributing to a cause without like taking custody of the money, having to like search for causes. Like we really wanted to make it like second nature and like make giving like almost like passive uh, so that people aren't like thinking about it all the time and it just becomes second nature. Um, and what, what the next phase kind of holds and what we're working on now is releasing like an open sourcing our like DAO, the protocol and allowing people to build on top of what we've already like established um, and allowing people to like actually set up like their own sort of like groups with like multiple causes or like host fundraisers, like host their own exhibitions and campaigns that allow people at any point to kind of like choose from the causes on our registry or submit their own through like a community onboarding process and actually allow them to contribute to like causes so that we remove ourselves as like a gatekeeper. Um, ultimately, we don't want to be telling people who can come and who can't join the platform for 
whatever reason. Uh, the idea is to kind of like hand over the keys to like the community and like whoever wants to build on top of it and let them build and like promote and like, you know, host whatever sort of projects they want to host. So, you know, if I can simplify it, you're trying to create a world where um, these impact or social causes can come to your platform and the audience determines who they're going to fall behind. Yeah. So you don't have to necessarily sell to them or convince them. They choose their own path and they support who they want to support. Yeah. I like that. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what can I say? Like, what is your, what is your biggest challenge right now? <laughs> Man, uh, there's a lot of challenges. I would say like there's regulatory challenges, there's fundraising challenges. Um, you know, especially in like the web three space, a lot of it's like driven on hype, uh, like, and what we just saw, you know, like obviously the markets come down considerably from all the hype and like the when moons, like that were just like a couple months back and the whole crypto and web three space is very cyclical and we go through these phases. And I think like the biggest challenge is as a company trying to promote social impact and promote like an actual revenue model that works to contribute and like help people. Um, how do we decouple from this cyclical nature of the market? You know, if uh, the market's going up and down, the value of giving or the ability for people to contribute shouldn't necessarily be affected by that. And our business shouldn't necessarily be affected by that either. So I would say like figuring out ways to decouple from that, um, finding people who align with our mission and values and want to help us like raise funds, like to allow us to keep building what we want to do. Um, scouting talent that like cares more about the ethos than like how much money they're going to make. Um, you know, I think like there's like a lot of like obstacles and things like, especially with talent in the space, there's like such a finite amount of like coders and like devs. Um, and it's been very hard for us to like find people within like our, our grant range and like the funds that we have available to like bring on the talent that we need to, to really take it to the next level. Um, you know, and that's okay. You know, we'll, it'll just take us like a bit longer to like build. And, you know, once we open source, we're hoping that people have the like ability and the empowerment to actually go and like, feel like they own a piece of this and like build whatever they'd like as like a passion project. Um, but in the last year of it being kind of this centralized company, um, it's been super difficult. Um, like, you know, trying to find the right talent, making sure we're compliant. Uh, making sure that there's like steady income and revenue for like the people who are like creating on the platform, the causes who are trusting us to like work with them. Um, you know, like social impact is amazing, but it's not as glamorous as owning a like $200,000 monkey, I guess. Um, and so that's the narrative we really want to shift. We want to make impact giving cool and we want people to be able to show off like oh, look, you can see how much I've give, given to these causes, these regions of the world, what I care about. Um, it's impact signaling, really. Um, so, yeah. All right. So it's more of we got to make giving look cool, all right? It, yeah. It is good, but, but it's not cool enough. It's not hot topic enough. But yeah. we, if we can figure yeah, out how to make it. about marketing, less about right. like giving as like for, for marketing purposes and like right. building like brand clout and more of like building like human clout and like being able to show like, this is how much I care and I'm willing to like, you know, contribute because of how much I care. Nice, all right. So early on you had mentioned about uh, raising funds up to like $6 million. And so you're, you're working with organizations or groups of people that are doing social impact causes or projects and they're raising money, right? Yep. Through the Web3. Now, I, our people out there are going to wonder, how can I do the same? How can I raise money through the Web3? How, how, was, how were you able to do the same? I think when, when the carbon drop was relatively early, um, I would say, like, since then, the landscape has changed a lot. Um, if you're a social cause, like, thinking you're going to come in and just, like, walk away with, like, a million dollars without, like, putting any time and energy into, like, learning about like the culture, the space, uh, it's just not going to happen. Uh, okay. You're going to be super disappointed. Like I would say you can't approach this um, from any different lens than how you would approach regular fundraising. Um, it's almost like a Kickstarter or like a GoFundMe. 
except you have the ability to give people utility, give them the ability to be part of the story, maybe even like help drive the decisions that are being like determined by the, the organization. Um, like Web3 has like a lot of potential to allow people to like trustlessly like make decisions around DAOs, et cetera, um, and actually like drive collaborative engagement. Um, so I would say for any causes trying to get into it, um, make sure one, that your organization is ready to accept crypto and what the like implications of that are from like a tax perspective, make sure your accountants are ready to do your taxes properly if you are gonna accept crypto. Um, you need to learn about it first. I would say that's the first steps. And the next steps is like, once you have like a basic understanding of like wallets, like how to get money, like what the different tokens are, et cetera, then you can start looking more into like NFT projects, different projects that are like doing different things around social impact and streaming money to social causes. Um, there's the giving block. They, they basically manage wallets for like certain social causes. If that's the route you want to do and you don't want to like hold on to your own money, um, totally fine. Um, and they'll take a fee for that. There's also endowment, uh, similar structure. I believe they're completely free as well, though. And they just want to help causes like get into the space. Um, and then after that, build out a project. Like if you were going to build out a fundraising campaign or something, like figure out how you can make cool art, something engaging and stimulating that you can give to people in exchange for their support and their funds and their money um, and figure out how to like weave them into your story. Like I think storytelling is super underrepresented, is un underrepresented in the space. There's a lot you can do and like emotional pulling on heartstrings if you can tell the right story and get people feeling passionate about the story you have to tell. Um, so yeah, that would be my advice. I would definitely not think if you're gonna just make a ton of money um, I think those days are actually past, and I think a lot of it will mimic what we've done for, you know, the last decades when it comes to fundraising, um, creating campaigns, creating, like, ways to, like, auction art for, for, fund for a good cause. Um, so, yeah, that would be my advice. All right. So, basically, you're saying um, at the end of the day, even though it's Web3 technology and all of this, there's still the human element to it. You have to be able to tell the story. You have to be able to draw people in. It's not just post your art or do anything. You have to be able to take them on a journey that they feel connected to the cause so yep. that they can put their money to it. Yeah, and, and I think like by the same token, like what, what we're trying to do with doing good is, you know, as an artist, like there's like the social impact space is overwhelming. Uh, and not to mention, there's a lot of causes, like there's a lot of fraud, there's a lot of like shady stuff going on behind the scenes, you know, you have celebrities setting up like funds and causes, but really they're like backdoor paying themselves like a ton of salary from it, like there's, there's a lot of shady stuff. And so like our approach was to like screen causes, like that are like compliant, transparent, and like abiding by regulations that we can like say to our community, here you go. These are causes that we trust that we put in the work to like find um, and like vet. And now it kind of like makes it easy where I can just like search, like I care about clean energy or I want, I care about like, you know, um, any of the sustainable development goals that I'm currently like fascinated with. You can basically pick the category and the things you care about. It'll filter the causes that you, that align with that. And it'll actually give you a summary of what they're doing and like more information if you want to find it. Um, and the goal is to like allow social causes like anyone to sign up for that. So you can just be in the registry, like available to receive funds. And obviously, like you'll get some money just by people like organically searching for you and stuff, just like on Google. But if you really want to connect with people, you need to put more effort into like projects like storytelling and getting people to resonate with you because there's so many causes. It's it's insane. Um, and you basically have to market and compete against other people other who are trying right. to do the same thing. Um, so, yeah. All right. So now um, in, in reading about you, you're a pioneer of bringing artists from Web3, Web2 to Web3, right? And uh, what kind of opportunities do you see emerging in this new space, in this Web3 space? I think Web3, at least right now, we're, we're seeing this like, weird transitionary phase where 
the hype is gone and all the smoke and mirrors is, are kind of like evaporating. Like 90% right. of the projects are going to disappear. The protocols, the platforms, like all that, a lot of that stuff's going to be gone. Um, and so will a lot of the noise and the influencers and like the people trying to constantly sell you and force feed you like garbage. Um, so that's kind of disappearing. And so a lot of people have been like building in stealth, like actually who believe in this space and like what it presents for creators and social cause, et cetera, um, will continue to build um, as time goes on. And I think it'll become easier to get in because once you're in, it seems easy, but to like 95% of the world who has no idea what's going on in this space, it's still very complicated and difficult and like scary to be completely honest. So what's probably next is like a lot of tools that are going to make it a lot easier for people to get in without having to learn all the jargon. Like you'll be able to punch in your email and a password and yeah, you won't own custody of your assets necessarily, but I don't know if everyone needs that. Um, you know, we trust banks, we trust like Facebook, we trust all these things with our information and our data and to do what they say they're going to do. And I think we'll probably see a replication of a lot of those systems becoming more prevalent. Um, so it should be easier for people to get involved in the space. Um, and what the opportunity would be I, next, I think, um, it's just another way to generate income. I, you know, don't quit your day job. Don't close down your e-commerce e store. Like, I think this is like the next wave is like web 2.5, where it's like a bridge between like all the things, you know, from web two and all the right. new exciting possibilities for web three, um, where you can basically like sell provable, authentic digital things or donate them or raffle them or like auction them for like a good cause. Um, and so basically if you're interested and you at all think like the future of our society, of culture, et cetera, is digital uh, and surrounds digital anything, you know, from gaming to social media to TikToks, whatever you want to do, um, then it's worth exploring, I think, and figuring out how you can weave it into your brand, weave it into the, weave it into the story that you're telling um, and really, you know, try to like educate your audience on why this is important and why it's something that you feel can help your brand and your cause and your, your persona grow um, and like be, be better for it. Nice. So are there any, any NFT projects you're currently working on? Uh, yeah. So I have like uh, two art projects I can't really talk about yet. Okay. Um, one of which is mostly like art focused and I'm building case studies around it to show artists that they can build complex projects with like gamification and cool art and like randomness and all the fun stuff from blockchain without actually having to hire a whole team of devs or coders. Um, so like, like my goals right now, like focus on my art, build and create more art. Um, obviously still working like part-time, like with doing good to help further the protocol and like make it publicly available to most people. Um, and then the third project is like a community kind of experiment, uh, also under wraps, um, figuring out like what that's going to look like, but kind of like using a case study for brands to figure out like how can brands enter this space, use like exciting storytelling that's like community driven, um, to that actually create value outside of just monetary value, like social value, like educational value. Um, I would say those are like the three things I'm actively working on. And then I advise like a couple projects, like anything where from like web three, like record labels that are like called the Vox collective. They're basically reimagining the record label structure and like pre-fronting like funds for like artists, musicians, et cetera, to create like immersive, experiences around a song release versus a like publish it online to like Spotify, et cetera, and kind of just like let fans like earn, like earn income from just streams or licensing. Um, there's a lot, honestly, uh, but we don't have to go too into it this time. It's all good, but it sounds exciting. So now let me break it down to somebody that's, that's just getting started. All right. So <laughs> here in my studio, you, you're not seeing him. There's a, a gentleman called Mr. Idea right, sitting right in front of me. Uh -huh. and this guy has amazing projects. Uh, I, I would love for you to meet him and work together with him. So if he is, and I don't know if he is, but I'm just saying, if he is not in the Web3 space, he's not into 
uh, NFTs yet, but he's great at what he does, right? How can he get connected to this new world? How can we build the bridge? Because you guys are the tip of the spear, right? You've already gone. You understand the jargon. You understand what the potential could be. Right now, we're in the crypto uh, winter, as they say. Uh, so it might be scary for a bunch of people. But there are people who have talent, who have the ability to create and create those immersive experiences. How can they get started and how can they get linked up with you because your company is trying to build this and how do they get selected to work with you? Totally. So I guess uh, from like the doing good angle, like we're actually going to be opening the platform to creators in just a couple of weeks. So it'll be available to the public. Anyone will be able to sign up and like start contributing to the social causes. Um, I also believe our registry will have like a formal application for people to just like upload their documents if they want to be listed on the platform. Um, like, you know, all this is a work in progress, but the, the goal is to just like follow us on social media, keep tabs, like kind of stay up to date on when we like open things up or when you can like get more involved. Um, outside of that, you know, I think when you, if you want to get involved in this space, it's, it's important to set intentions and like the why. Like, are you just trying to make money? Are you curious? Are you trying to learn something new? Do you really believe that like digital everything will dominate like the world in the next 10, 20? Um, I think establishing like why you wanna get involved in these things is the most important. Um, if you're just trying to make money, that's cool. You could probably do a thousand other things um, that you already know without having to like learn all this like crazy tech jargon and stuff, at least for now. Um, if you are trying to like bridge into the space as like another way of generating income or you're interested or you feel like it's something that can like, it aligns with your ethos and really can generate like additional impact for like your cause, your art, whatever you're trying to do, then I think the best thing to do is just dive in and start learning. Like Google's your friend, crypto Twitter is your friend. Um, there's plenty of like amazing free resources online um, for learning when you're just starting out. Um, don't discount getting involved in communities and talking to people like connections and bonds are also really important. Just like in the real world, forming online connections are also really important. Um, and then from there, like I would say there's no rush, like take your time, like do your research, like find tools and projects and resources that align with what you're trying to build uh, and make sense and just start dipping your toes in. But while you're doing it, make sure you're communicating to your audience, your brand, et cetera, why you're doing this, why you're interested by it, like, and authentically do it because, you know, people are smart. And if you're just like, oh, we're doing NFTs because it's cool and blah, blah, blah. And like, we're doing it like on this platform because it's green and energy conscientious. That narrative is like so overplayed and it doesn't feel as authentic anymore. Like you really need to like align it with all of your brand messaging, everything you've been doing like up until now, like weave it in, like talk about like why and how you're going to be doing this. And if you can't answer those questions, then maybe it's not the right time for you to like get into it because there is a lot of education and a lot of like talking and like teaching your audience how this stuff works if you're going to do it. Otherwise, you're just basically targeting a hyper niche group of people um, who are already involved in it. And maybe that isn't like the best strategy from like a marketing plan. Any, any other parting words? You know, this is great information. If, if I'm just a guy that's watching this, I happen to stumble upon this video. Any parting words? Like why Web3? Why go down this rabbit hole? And what do you see that we could actually build with this, these tools? Yeah, well, for me, I think the future is digital. I think we're already starting to see, I mean, I love the real world, don't get me wrong, but I think like more and more digital technology is gonna like almost overlap like the world as we know it. And when that happens, like I think things like digital ownership, like digital goods, um, proof of behavior stuff, um, like basically being able to prove you were in a location or at an event or like collecting things that a brand or like a concert or an experience you attend like gives to you um, as a memento. 
I think all of those things, um, and especially with like Web3 and blockchain, like have the ability to like change the way we engage with brands, we engage with like consumer products, um, everything. And, and that's more so why a lot of these big brands have gotten in. It's not because they're trying to make a quick million dollars. Like these brands don't care about that. That's like a drop in the bucket. What they're envisioning is like the infrastructure of like a digital future where they can have like digital experiences and like ways to like connect and grow their audience like way faster than in a physical realm. Um, so there's a lot of exciting things about it. Like there's a lot of like metaverse world projects, like games that you can build in and create like custom shopping experiences. Um, if you're a cause and you want to do something a bit more immersive, you could build like, you know, if you like rainforests and you want to support the rainforest, you can build an immersive rainforest that people can like talk to each other in and like engage with one another and actually have an auction for like anything digital in that space. Um, so there's like so much potential. It's still really new. Um, but yeah, like just learn, like be curious, like experiment, dip your toes in, like there's no wrong way to do it unless you're approaching things from like an inauthentic standpoint. Um, and then you risk everything, including your brand reputation, your image, your audience, your customers, your supporters. Um, so be smart, uh, be patient. Um, and yeah, and if anyone ever needs to like learn or have it, has any questions, wants to learn anything, um, they can always just follow me on Twitter. I post some stuff or share things that I find that are interesting all the time. All right. So how can they find you on Twitter? What's your Twitter handle? Uh, Kyle Gordon Art. Kyle Gordon Art. All right. Kyle, it's been a pleasure talking Likewise. to you. Uh, I've learned quite a bit. Uh, and with <laughs> all of these interviews that I'm doing, it's always a new niche, a new experience, a new way of learning. And I appreciate the information you've given us. Uh, is there, if someone was watching and they were trying to help figure out how to help your cause, your company, or help you scale to whatever level you're trying to get to, what would that help look like? Uh, I mean, join our Discord. Uh, Doing Good HQ is our handle on Twitter, on social media. Um, feel free to reach out to anyone on the team, or you can just DM me on Twitter. That's probably the easiest way to get in touch. Um, and I can either talk to you myself or rally to the people who can like get you more involved. All right. Well, thank you, Kyle. It's been a pleasure and have a great rest of your day. Likewise. We'll Thanks for having me. Soon. You take care.